Okay, we entered her profile, and now we have the, um, we trimmed our, our upper profile and our lower IR area. So we're going to rerun this, and this should come out pretty much, pretty much dead on, and we're hoping. We're going to keep an eye on it and see how it goes. So we adjusted our preheat here on our lower IR to 185 and then we trimmed our profile by about 10 to 20 degrees at the end and then cut off our excess steps. We had an extra stage on there we didn't need, which we added in just in case we were going to be too cold so we weren't really planning on keeping that. And our preheat's running now, it's going to take about another uh, about another four minutes, four minutes or so, and then we should be at the end of the preheat stage. Let's check out our lower IR area heater sensors, make sure we got a good board reading. Big difference about the um, the biggest difference between this unit is uh, it's running about the same as the HR 360. From what I can see, the profile is almost almost exactly the same. We're very close. The uh, the lower IR seems to be um, more accurate, and HR 360 has a bit more gap between the board and the IR plates. So you have to set your IR a bit hotter. This one doesn't seem to need too much of a gap. So we're at about three minutes and our bottom IR is almost almost up to temperature. It's starting to slow down. So it has pretty much a, a bottom IR cycle of less than five minutes, which is pretty quick. So around seven, eight minutes we should be fully preheated. This profile is going to, by about six minutes, our, this profile is going to kick into the first stage, which is a minute long. So by the end of the first stage we're fully preheated and that would be considered our soak phase and then after that it should climb up and do a uh, pretty much step up until it hits our reflow and then we're going to be looking for uh, 221 degrees after which we should uh, have a good reflow and then this is going to probably be our last test board and then we'll take a an actual defective board and give it a shot and see how it goes So we're preheated now, we should be getting close to our full preheat phase, our lower heater is pretty much starting to slow down until it catches up to a 185 there. As you can see like last time we ran it our bottom 
bottom of the board is a little little bit uh, reading a little bit cooler than it probably is we're probably closer to 160 or so but that cool air from the bottom jet is blowing across those sensors so that's going to give us a little bit of a low reading until we start stepping our profile up but that's going to let our board preheat fully So once we kick in that first minute there, we're going to have a good soak that get our flux activated. We should be right about now, we should start kicking up. So there we go, stage two, we're stepping up. So we're going to start pulling our, our component up to the soak phase. Our board is now preheated, fully preheated. Our IR heater is pretty much balanced off, so that's not going to get any hotter. Our board is going to start catching up to the preheater. And by our next phase, we should start pulling our board up close to the close to the soak phase. It might be another step or two. And then our last phase should get us into the reflow stage. Right now our component's going to climb into a soak phase. We're about halfway through our third stage. And then our fourth and fifth stage will complete our soak stage and take us into the reflow. So right now we are in our soak stage. Our red line is graphing our component temperature. We're going to pull it into the 160, 170 degrees right through here. We're going to need about a minute in there. And then once that's finished, that should start pulling us up another step. We got a nice, nice smooth soak right now. Temperatures are about 180 across the board. So our component is going to slowly climb up to 160, 170. Passing 175, so now we're going to be heading towards our reflow stage. Step four is going to pull us up into a pre pre re, reflow. Get our chips. Um, our lower hot air here is going to superheat our bottom of our board. As you can see, our one pre preheater is reaching 200. So we're going to want to keep our board from getting too much hotter. This is where we wanted to kind of hold off a little bit and get our board to kind of slow down at this point and stay in this this 200 degree temperature. Now again, that's going to be getting a little bit of elevated reading because of that hot air jet. So it's okay if we're reading a five or ten degrees hotter here because our board really is preheating at 185. 
but our meters are going to read a little bit of excess heat coming off that lower airstream which is at 230 right now and now we're in the reflow stage our top of our component is getting hit with some temp some heat there so we can get the chip melted and now we're heading on into reflow we got about 40 seconds left to get our chip up and melted here Board temperature is reading just below 200. You can see the air is bouncing that around a little bit. Alright, and we're just about there now. So we should be finished any second. And we are at 220. So we came in one one oh there's 221, that's what we wanted right there. Just hit 221 exactly and now we're dropping out. So that's exactly what we were looking for. We hit it exactly to one to the degree. So we were dead on. So that's a good working profile. It gives us a nice little nice little melding transition phase of about 30 seconds 30 seconds right here this is our our plateau this is our reflow right here and then that's our soak right here actually our soak would be right here this is our soak this is our pre reflow and then this is our reflow and there's our preheat so that came out just right everything hit the right temperatures we're going to go ahead and stop the machine, turn on our fan, and then we're going to take a, a known bad PS3 board and give it a shot. But there's our graph, everything hit right on the money. That red line is what we wanted to see, and the green shows you the heat that's being applied to get us there. So. We would consider that a successful uh, successful profile. It took us about three passes to get it. And then we're going to take that profile and we're going to make some changes to bump it around a little bit so that it is a working Xbox profile and then make some changes to get it to be good for a laptop. And then we should be good to go. Anyway, that's profiling the IR360. Um, we're going to make a, a more detailed series on reballing with the IR360. So keep tuned for that, and then uh, we'll see you when we're doing that. Have a good night.